Hello, welcome back to my channel. It's your girl Sharon, aka the Melanin Nostalgic Runner, and we are back in the normal spot. And this is um, a double recap because for those who may have noticed, I did not recap last week's episode, The Summer's Half Smarter's Vineyard. And um, so instead of trying to, you know, do it later on in the week, I just decided let's just do a double recap. And, um, so I'll go in the order of like what happened based off the people in the show last week's, um, episode, and then I'll go ahead and do it again for this week's episode, um, that just passed and hopefully you enjoy. Um, but yeah, I'm back and, um, I'm happy to be back. So for those who are not aware and the reason why you didn't get the review, I actually went on a birthday trip. I was out for eight days in Puerto Rico and I um, visited, I did like a round trip type deal, started in San Juan, um, but I really wasn't there. I kind of went to like the southeast part of the island and went all the way around. So that's why you didn't get a review. And if you want, <clears throat> also, if you want to hear more about that Puerto Rico trip, I have a Seeing Things Differently series that I recap all eight days. So a lot of material for those who follow my personal content on YouTube, as well as just, you know, my reviews. So anyway, without further ado, let's get into um, Summer's House Martha's Vineyard. And of course, we'll go in order um, from there. All right. So the first part of this double recap um, picks up where we left off in the last episode. So Summer and Jordan got into it in the van on the way home from um, the dinner. And um, Summer's really upset and she's literally spiraling as she slams the car door and then goes in the house. And she's venting kind of loudly stating, you know, like, you know, she has these feelings of like, and this is something I've noticed with Summer and I feel like this is going to be a thing, a theme that we notice with her just in general. Her communication is not that great. That's one thing. I think I mentioned that before in previous episodes. And also number two, it's like she doesn't um, handle her emotions the best, especially emotions of conflict. So what um, she's doing, she's pretty much, much venting. She's like, you know, Jordan can be angry, but I can't be angry. Like, I'm expected to be kind, nice, this, that, and this, and that. And I don't understand where she's getting that from. To me, it's like you show people how you want to be treated. You articulate and have your feels however your feels are. And also, too, just because Jordan reacts the way she does, doesn't mean that that's correct. And really, people are okay with it. And... Personally, me as a viewer, I'm never, I'm not okay with how Jordan acts ever. And honestly, this whole entire episode, she was exhausting. I was kind of over her. And I really, um, you know, I think I've said this before. Jordan's like my least favorite person on this cast, like easily. Um, Bria can be annoying at times, but Jordan, everything's a fight. Everything's, she's like this at all times. She did explain why. She's had to be that way, but maybe I sound a little insensitive or whatever, but it's like, we've all had hard lives. You know, we all have hard lives. Not every, at the end of the day, that's on you to get the therapy and help you need so that you can be able to let loose and deal with whatever emotions you have. So you're not always on the defense. And a lot of what Jordan did this episode, because this is, for those who are Jordan fans of this show, um, oh, by the way, wow, I got right, right into it. This is called Summer Under Pressure. This is episode four, season two of <laughs> Martha's Vineyard. And I got right into it. But my thing with Jordan is that she puts 20 on 10 a lot. And... Um, I don't want to skip ahead, but I don't hear ever any accountability on her end. Like, ever. Like, why? You know what? I'm not going to skip to that. Let's, I'm going to go and order the cast, and then we'll go from there. So, um, 
And so Summer and Jordan in the conflict with that will have that last because that was what led to other things. Um, so it'll be close to last because um, then we'll get into Bria. We'll get into um, Jasmine and then also Shanice and um, Alex. Anyway, so anyway, fast forward with that. We did um, next morning. Basically, after, George, after Summer is blowing up with everyone and everyone's trying to get her calmed down, Jordan, on the other end, is talking to Preston and Noel and is somehow making it about her and how she feels, even though Jordan, even though Summer was the one who was originally upset. And that's one thing she does a lot. And I, I'm like, OK, I feel like I'm being gaslit. <laughs> Like how is how when I was the one who came with you about me being upset now you're upset with me. Where do they do that at? What? Anyway, so that was what was happening on the opposite end while everyone else is pretty much comforting um and trying to like get um summer calm down cuz summer is like ant and so from there, fast forward, morning happens, and some of the um, cast is going to church. Also, while this is happening, I'm sorry, it wasn't Noel. It was um, Shanice that was comforting Jordan. Noel is in her room crying because she still feels a way that she, she feels like um, Alex rejected her, which he kind of did. I mean, yeah, he did. But... You know, I, for me personally, I don't think it was worth crying about. And because <laughs> y'all haven't done anything for it to be anything yet. Like y'all haven't kissed. Y'all haven't done nothing for it to be a thing. It's like, okay, this isn't it. Whatever. And so she's in her feelings. But we find out later the reason why she's extra in her feelings because it's not really about Alex. It's about um, other. It's about her trauma when it comes to like her dad. And her dad not being present. And Alex is just like a representation of her dad. Uh, which hopefully that's not something that happens for her in general. Where she has representation of anyone who's a guy in her life that she's interested in. Hopefully that's not what it is. Um, but it seems like Noelle is kind of young. So she'll figure it out. And that's just one of those things. As women sometimes we go through that. So I get that. So. But while she's like kind of crying, this is still the same night. That's where we have all this other stuff. But anyway, then we fast forward to the morning and some of the cast is going to church. Alex actually goes to goes into Summer and Noelle's rooms like, hey, do y'all want to go to church? And he just said it like very generally. He didn't really say Summer. He's like, hey, do y'all want to go to church? And Summer answered. Noelle didn't. And he's like, OK, go on church. Shanice went, which was hilarious because she was definitely still drunk. And she definitely made it known, like, hey, come as you are. <laughs> That's what God said. Come as you are. It's like. And then we also had, um, I believe we also had Jasmine and then also Nick that went to church. Everyone else stayed, stayed in. Um, Bria. Um, so, so, uh, Bria was asleep still. Everyone else is pretty much still asleep. So while they're at church, um, they're talking through what happened last, the, the, the night before. So Summer is talking to Preston about how they handled the situation with Jordan. And, um, and that's pretty much all that's happening there. Fast forward, everyone comes back from church. And, um, Bria, Bo, Bria mentioned that she felt a way that she wasn't really invited. Same thing with Noelle. Noelle, but the thing is, Alex did just go in the room and just say, hey, y'all, do you want to go to church? He wasn't talking to just specifically Jordan. He said, because you can be plural. And I'm pretty sure that's kind of how he was saying it. But because Noelle is still in her feelings about being rejected, because also Noelle does end up consoling Summer and talking to Summer about it and really explains that this is not really about Alex, about her dad. 
And um, so she felt away and told Alex, like, hey, why was I not invited? And then Bria's like, I wasn't invited either. And Alex, like, oh, it's not a big deal. Like, we're going next, we're, we're going to go again. And they're like, okay, cool, cool, cool. And then um, Preston's like, ah, I'm, I'm good with going. I'm not going to go to church. Um, but then um, Amir says something ditzy about church and religion. And <laughs> it's kind of like, okay. But um, so anyway, while this is happening, um, Bria was already in the kitchen along with some of the other people because they're getting prepared for soul food night. Um, and then also, too, before they do get ready for soul food night, we see that Noelle ends up talking to her mom. And her mom basically talks her off the ledge of how she was feeling. And she and gets, basically gets her toughen up and stop crying over this dude and just move on. And we find out how close Noelle and her mom are. So that's cool and so dope. And side note, for those who don't realize, I love Noelle as is on the cast. For her being kind of young and just like new to the cast and adding a little zest to the the, the cast she also has is very caring very motherly and I love that like it, Jasmine does that too but because Jasmine kind of rubbed a lot of people the wrong way last season I feel like Noelle's kind of picking up where Jasmine left off so there's that um so then from there we go on to the beach day they do decide they go to Inkwell Beach and they have themselves a time so they go to the beach, have themselves a time. And um, from there, also to this whole entire episode, by the way, Jordan's energy is stank. It's just stank. We have moments where Jordan like appears to like be, you know, present. But the rest of the time, she just kind of just is like. I'm like, girl. And the thing that's bothersome about that, too, is I know that, um, well, from what I've heard, Jordan acted completely different in Winter House. And I feel a way about that. So Winter House is a little bit more of a mixed cast. Um, we're not melanated there. So I'm, I'm just kind of wondering what that's about. Also, too, and I'm not going to watch Winter House and figure it out because I don't care. Um, but then also to the other thing that's a little odd about the whole thing to me also is that, oh, so Summer and Jordan do eventually talk, by the way, before, I don't remember, if it was, I think it was before Soul Food Night and nothing really, Jordan thinks they resolve things, but they didn't <laughs> like Summer did not get hurt. She did not get hurt. She was not respected. It was kind of some BS. And I kind of, at that moment, was like one of the, this is the first episode that I really kind of felt for Summer. I'm like, dang, this woman's literally punking her. What is this? And so I, I am, fortunately, this is the episode I think things are turning around for Summer, at least how I feel about Summer. Because Summer does share she's going through a lot of stuff outside the show. She's trying to look for her um, biological parents. Um, she's also, besides doing that, um, she's trying to take care of her grandma who has cancer. She has a lot of other stuff going on and she does vent to that. So she's just like this Jordan conflict. I don't really need this right now. And so anyway, she ends up talking to Jordan. Jordan somehow spins it, makes it about her. And Summer ends up apologizing to her. Even though all Summer did was saying, I was just consoling you earlier on for you to do what you're doing now. And Jordan took that as like, I can't trust you. You're talking to people. You're talking to my enemies about what I got going on. And her by enemy, she means Jasmine. And Jasmine wasn't her, your enemy before. And now all of a sudden she's your enemy. Girl. What? And also, too, you're on TV. Everyone was going to figure it out. So what are you talking about? <sighs> also, so I was annoyed at this moment because it's like Summer's issue with Jordan is kind of this issue that everyone has with Jordan, including me as a viewer. 
she gets very defensive. Everything's a fight. Everything is, she can pop off and say what she wants and kind of be slick with the tongue and talk kind of like a little bit disrespectful to others because that mouth be mouthing. But anytime when someone else kind of gives her just a little bit of what she gives, puts out there, it's a whole entire problem. And Summer has been basically doing the bare minimum of like, just gave her a little bit of what Jordan does. And Summer also made it known before they even this, before they went to the house, like, don't talk to me crazy. And she did that already. So, and Summer actually vented that. And actually, this is one of the first times Summer articulate exactly how she felt correctly, properly. She came in with attention. She wasn't flustered. She said exactly how she felt. And did Jordan apologize at all or was accountable at all? No. All she said was, okay. And I'm like, what am I supposed to do with that? I'm like, are you going to say sorry? Are you going to acknowledge that you maybe need to change your tone and work on that? Yeah, so at that moment, I was like, girl, bye. So according to Jordan, they're good, but she, now she has trust issues. When really, you did not hear your friend at all. And I did watch Watch What Happens Live after this episode. So Summer and Jasmine were on the show. And basically, Summer and Jasmine are pretty much in the same similar position when it comes to Jordan. They... Jasmine still isn't really talking to Jordan, and now Summer's in the house with her, too. And I see why. This is why. It makes sense to me. And I feel like Jordan needs to really work on stop being a mean girl and really needs to, like, get some therapy and work through her things. Like, I get you lose, you know, you have your issues with your losing your hair. That is huge. That is a problem. I mean, full transparency, that happens to a lot of people. And even when I was doing a lot of my protective styles, like all last year, I noticed that was starting to happen to me. Like, if you look here, see, I was starting to lose some of my hair too. So I had to stop doing so many protective styles. This is why my hair is a lot more, I've been trying to go more natural and not even straighten it to give my hair a break and try to, you know, restore my hair. Um, so yeah. That's a, tr um, I kind of just share that really, just really briefly right there. But also too, um, one thing I learned too is moving forward, if I do any protective styles up until my hair gets restored to how I want them, I have to do it really loosely. So the long, the longest my protective styles are probably going to last before they start kind of looking crazy is probably three weeks tops. And that's literally how long I had my protective styles for Puerto Rico trip. I did protective style right before the trip. And then I took it down like that Friday. And then Saturday, the hair was like, no, that Thursday. I didn't even give it the whole three weeks. Hair was like this on Friday and Saturday. Had different hairstyles and different versions of it. That, But that's why. Um, but I know her alopecia is like the hereditary kind and I get she's dealing with a lot and I don't want to come off as insensitive, but that does not give you the authority to treat other people like trash. That's pretty much all I'm saying. So move on to the next conflict of this episode. Okay. So <clears throat> from there, after they have the, so they talk this over and then they have the soul food dinner. The soul food dinner went pretty well for the most part. This is where um, Alex started to notice that Jordan's being really, really quiet. So because it's really obvious that she's just not engaged. She's just kind of there, has a stank look on her face. And, you know, Alex is like, I think I'm going to talk to her later on about it to figure out what, what's, what's that about. Um, and he does end up talking to her later about it. But anyway, soul food dinner, not much happened. Fast forward next day. Next day is Bria's event, and with Bria's event, she did like a Brichella outside and outdoors, and child, it was like, it was a hosh posh of like hot mess stuff. <laughs> so we had 
cotton candy machine. We had um, popcorn machine. Um, exotic animals. And they're all, and then like fair looking seating and stuff like that. And this is all happening at lunchtime. And yeah, it was interesting. Um, also too, before this Brichella thing happened, we see that Jasmine talks to Silas and then eventually has Silas says hi to everyone, like, you know, on FaceTime. And Jasmine finally does, you know, state the obvious that she's expecting and they're expecting. But she is, hasn't told the group yet. And the main reason why she hasn't told the group yet is she's not at the second trimester yet. Um, so she will be eventually and pretty soon while they're on the trip. But she wants to wait until that passes through, which makes sense because, you know, that. In general, that's a very common normal thing. You don't announce your pregnancy pre to pre prior to second trimester because the first trimester you're the most at risk for like a miscarriage and whatnot. So it's considered bad luck a lot of times to, you know, announce it prematurely because a lot can happen between that first trimester. Um, especially if there's stress involved. In her case, with her husband being deployed. Yeah, I would understand why she's trying. She's she's waiting it out. Anyway, so she does a FaceTime to everyone. Cause, so she talked to her husband individually about it. But then from there on, then she like, you know, did a FaceTime to everyone. So they were able to be like, hi, Silas, what's up? And then from there on, the Brichella thing happened. And from there, really... um. Not much happened with that. And we fast forward to later on in the day where they all go out to dinner. And this is where everything kind of popped off. So they go out to dinner. And immediately after they're seated and everything, Alex finally just says like, hey, Jordan, what's going on with you? Is everything okay? Like, it seems like you're just really quiet. And Jordan's just being unbearable. It's like, what do you mean? Like, as if, like, it's not obvious that you're just not engaging and you're being different. And then she literally goes into trauma dumping mode. I'm not, I hate to say this, but that's how it felt. It felt like trauma dumping road. Like, just went into this thing about, like, how growing up it was hard, this, that, and this, and I, like, not about what's going on right now, but she went, well, she also mentioned that too. She mentioned the alopecia thing, but she like word vomit all of it. And, you know, Alex was like, not to, I, I hate that you had to like be this vulnerable, but thank you for your vulnerability. And this is the most I've learned about you this whole entire time I've known you. And then this is where Jordan did this defensive thing that she does immediately. She's like, well, I wanted to beat your ass last time I saw you. So that's the reason why I wasn't like doing that last season to keep it real. You had my friend messed up. And when she's talking about friend, she's talking about Shanice. I don't know why the Shanice thing is her business and why she's holding on so much energy about that more than Shanice even is. But... That's Jordan for you. If there's a reason to be angry, that's what she's going to do. I mean, I hate to call a thing a thing, but that's my view of hers. If there's a reason to be angry, that's what she's going to do. That's she's going to leave with anger. And she it's like she reaches for any straw possible to be angry. So then the whole conversation gets revisited about how... Alex brought up the ex situation on camera, which he did, but he wasn't the one he, they made it the Alex is like, okay, no, 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 no. What we're not going to do. We're not going to pretend I'm the only one that knew about it. Nick's the one who actually brought it to my attention, first of all, and it was going to come out anyway. So I wanted Shanice, you to address it, to hold their narrative. And that's not always, I don't feel like that's always true, Alex. I'm going to get to you on that. I don't think that was all the way true. I think because you're kind of interested in Shanice, you were scared. And so you wanted to get the answer about it, not really to protect her. 
Because that sounds like some mansplaining if I ever heard nothing else. I was like, dang, that's messed up. But actually, even like, um, and I forgot to mention, and, and, um, so even like um, Jasmine's like, you know what? I kind of also made y'all talk about it too. And Alex called out. I was like, Jasmine's the one who kept bringing it up for, for us to talk it through. And Nick's the one who even brought it to my attention to begin with. I never Googled you and figured all that out. And then Shanice is just crying. It's like, that was traumatic. It really messed with me. Like, it really messed me up. And I believe Shanice. I think it did. I Because Shanice just has... <laughs> Shanice, oh gosh. She reminds me of an unevolved version of me. A.K.A. An unevolved Aries. An unevolved Aries with all that fire... It's crazy. <laughs> I'm just going to call a thing a thing. We're the life of the party when there's a party. But when it comes to how we deal with our emotions and vulnerability, unevolved, child, it's a hot mess. It, it, it's given ticking time bomb. <laughs> and younger me was a little bit like that. I was definitely a ticking time bomb. And Shanice kind of reminds me of that. But the good news that came out of this conversation is Shanice was finally vulnerable about it and finally was sharing her emotions a lot more. Because we found out last episode, remember that Shanice finally did admit she's in therapy. I think the therapy's working. I think little by little, we're going to see Shanice finally understanding the assignment that vulnerability is a superpower. And when you lead with that, and you lead with it like a superpower, no one can touch you. I lead with it at all times. And it's not really, I don't lead with it like poor me. I lead with, well, this is what happened. And if I already put it out there, how can you, or how are you going to use it as a defense against me if I'm the one who put it out there? It's giving control your own net narrative. That's the beauty of when you're being vulnerable. You can control your own narrative. Pro tip, guys. Anyway, <laughs> it just reminds me because I'm like, Shanice, she's, oh, I love her, but she's crazy. <laughs> but I don't, I don't believe that Shanice did everything that um, her ex accused her of. And she even stated in this that like her ex was just being vindictive. To me, it just sounded like a really toxic relationship, which is an, that's another common Aries trait. What we will do well is get ourselves into a toxic relationship where that person will make you crazy. And then, yeah, you might have done some of the things, but not all the things. And to me, I think she did some of the things, but not all the things. And bring out, and then y'all both are just toxic together. And it's just a hot mess. And now you're just trying to one up each other in toxicity. And it seemed like a lot of that is what happened. And, um, but they talk it out for the most part. Shanice does end up receiving a hug from Alex, which was weird because Shanice is not a hugger. Um, again, as another Aries <laughs> Now I am a hugger, but I used to not be. I used to be like, get away from me. <laughs> but anyway, so it just, um, so that gets resolved and it goes from there to child another mess. So at this moment, this is where Bria decides she's going to finally be honest because, oh yeah, there's a little tidbit in this episode that Bria was venting to... Um, she was venting to um, Shanice and then she was also venting to um, Noella, Noelle about the Mariah situation because Bria's like and, and the problem is Bria does this only when she's been drinking as far as how she presents things but I think what Bria was trying to say is she felt a way about how Jasmine was sneaky about it, which I can see how she would feel a way about it, but she doesn't really feel a way about um, Mariah really getting there. It's just how Jasmine went about it, but that's not what Bria is saying. Instead, Bria is saying is she doesn't feel safe with Mariah being there at all, which is not correct. 
And the reason why I'm saying is not correct is there, she literally did an interview after the season wrapped up last season saying she had no problem with Mariah. And if she was to come back next season, she would have no problem with it. So I don't think it really is her coming back. It's just the sneaky way that how Jasmine went about it was not the best. And really, I don't know if Jasmine did that or the producers did that or if it's a little bit of both. But either way, they Jasmine's over it. She's like, one, the flip-flopping is this. Because just before, Bria seemed like she was okay with it. Now she's not. And even what I said before, that interview... Like, that was an interview that everyone saw. So it was like, you went from being okay to not. One, well, the flip-floppy is this. And be also because Bria did not state that her issue is how Jasmine did this and not the fact that she has a problem with Mariah. And so Bria flies off the handle and she's like, I'm not in a comfortable space. It starts like walling out. And while she's wilding out, then we see that Jasmine rebuts back and she's like, I need y'all support. I don't need this right now. I'm going through a lot. And then she starts crying. And that's where the episode ends. <laughs> so this episode was kind of a hot mess. It was a little, it was a little wild. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much the review. Um, the second part of the recap will be the next day. And I'm going to mention something that was in the second part of the recap that I forgot to add. We're going to add it in here now that, Oh, Amir, he did Amir talk to his girlfriend again. Cause I don't remember what happened this episode or the, episode that, or the next recap, but Amir did talk to her episode, talk to his girlfriend again. And that's just, and honestly that relationship seems toxic. Cause I'm just like, what's happening there. Um, oh, because we also find out that Amir's girlfriend is from Miami. Um, we found that at Brichella. And um, she's like Cuban and something else. I forgot what it was. But um, anyway, that does conclude this episode. Please like, comment, subscribe to the channel if you get anything out of the content. And sorry for the delay of this review. But you already know your girl was on vacation and now we're back. But anyway. Please like, comment, subscribe to the channel if you get anything out of the content. It's your girl Sharon, aka Melanin Nostalgic Runner, and I will see you next time. Bye!